Pike's Peak in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado was named after Zebulon Pike the Explorer, a guy who said in 1806, no human could ever climb to a stop. Now there's a paved road all the way to the mountain summit. On this mountain, the oxygen level at the top is half what it is at the bottom. I had been riding my bicycle through Colorado for five weeks and huffing and puffing on high passes. Pikes Peak would be the tallest summit yet at 14,000 feet. It's one thing to test your limits. It's another to demonstrate a total lack of wisdom on a loaded bicycle. My friend Kent offered to take me up in his car and I accepted, hauling the bike and panniers with us. When looking for a way to get to the top, I considered the cog train. It turns out they don't allow bicycles on the train. Who knows why they couldn't add a few racks to the outside. Seems to me they would get a lot of use. We had a perfect weather day on Pikes Peak because one could see over a hundred miles. It could have been snowing with below freezing temperatures, but it was a toasty 60 degrees. I didn't see one other bike while up there, going up or down. As I left the summit, I ran into a guy from Golden who was employed to the south somewhere and always stopped to ski down the mountain as he passed by on his way to a job. He parked his vehicle at the snow line and then thumbed rides with pickup trucks up to the top to make his runs. If you are considering riding Pikes Peak but concerned about the thin air, let me tell you what I have learned. I'm 72 and there are some things one has to accept with age. I complained to a doctor I met once in a cafe that I was still in poor shape even after 3,000 miles on my trip and weeks riding high in the mountains. He told me that many people save all their lives to retire into the mountains, build their dream home, only to find out their bodies no longer acclimate to the higher elevations. The answer is that they're just too darn old. That information seemed to match up with my experience. Up high, I was lethargic, lacked energy, and was breathing hard while pedaling. Later, once I was back down on the prairie at a reasonable elevation, below 5,000 feet, I felt like I was pedaling a rocket. I was cycling 40, 50 miles before noon each day and in my best shape ever. Braking is a major consideration when making one's way down a high grade. I had had brake pads wear out on a steep roadway, but nothing as treacherous as this. That metal on metal screeching noise from the rims can be very unnerving. The Pikes Peak grade is 6.5% to 11% for 19 miles. Each year, there are a number of races up Pikes Peak by car, motorcycle, and bicycle. Probably some by foot, too. They lose some of these races over the side, doing practice runs or actually participating at one of the 150 turns fairly often, and no one wants to be a statistic. On a loaded bike, my descent was at a safe speed but using total concentration. One slip or allowing one speed to get out of control momentarily, and you are airborne, brother. Are you kidding me? You beat me down here? Stop a couple times. Huh? Stop. <laughs> That's amazing. Where are you biking from? Iowa? Uh, actually, I come from California. I'm headed to Iowa. Wow, that's impressive itself. I, I've been coming here 25 years. Yeah. A long time. Wow. Oh. You know, it's easy to access. And...
Yeah, yeah. Two weeks ago, it was just as good as it's probably ever been, <laughs> maybe close. The 90s were good here, too. Yeah. Our, yeah. our 90s, ooh, pickup. Pickup truck. That's your ride? Yeah, no. Hopefully. You're not gonna... Thanks for stopping, man. Oh, yeah. Cool, bud. Yeah, I That's hope you have a good time. Come on, Iowa. Let's go. Iowa. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Come on, Iowa. Let's All go. right. Are you going to check me? Kudos to you. Aren't you going to well, check me? Well, you know me? why we don't check you. Oh. What is that? 30? 32. What is that? You know, the motorcycle's coolest temperature is like 58 degrees. Oh. Is this your first time coming up and down? Yes. Ah, nicely yes. done then. Oh, yeah. It's the only okay. bit of advice I have for you, do you want me to take a get done if you've got a little sandpaper? Maybe rub that on your brake pads and that'll get all that goo off of it. Oh, really? Get a little gooed up. Oh, okay. There's a mountain behind you there. Hey, okay. And we'll get one more on this side. Ready? Excellent. That's fantastic. Thank you, Miss Wilson. The views were spectacular in the traffic light, most of their motors on the way up straining with the steep grade. There was only one annoyance, and it was actually kind of weird. Some people on the way down would pace along with me wanting to carry on a conversation out their car window while I'm trying to judge my speed for the next turn. The further I progressed down the side of the mountain, the mushier my brakes became. I was always looking for a place to bail out, just in case. Once I reached Manitou Springs, I headed straight for a bicycle shop. My brake levers were hitting the stops, but the mechanic said the brake pads were okay. The cables are stretched, he said. You must have had a death grip coming down that mountain. He was right. Once at the bottom, you feel yourself relaxing and think that maybe that's enough for one day? You stop for a minute or so just to regroup. There is also the satisfaction that maybe you have done something unusual and extraordinary in your life, and you take pride in that. I was going to look for a cold beer. By the way, that Pike Peak Road, it was the best downhill ride ever for me. Down. Baby. Woo!